We are still on the case of one dimensional flows where we are dealing with flows on the circle. And in this lecture, our focus will be on the non uniform oscillator. Now consider the following equation theta dot is equal to omega minus a sine theta. And this equation actually comes up in numerous areas of science and engineering. For example, in electronics, we have phase locked loops. In biology, you have oscillating neurons and the human sleep wake cycle. In condensed matter physics, you have charge density waves. And in mechanics, you have the overdamped pendulum, which is driven by a constant torque. Now, these are just a few examples of nonlinear oscillators which arise in science and in engineering. To analyze theta dot is equal to omega minus a sine theta, we assume that omega is greater than zero and a is greater than or equal to zero. Note that the results for negative omega and a are actually similar. So now let's plot theta dot versus theta. So we plot theta dot versus theta. Note that omega is the mean and a is the amplitude. Now let's consider the vector fields for the system. If a is equal to zero, we get the uniform oscillator. The parameter a introduces a non-uniformity in the flow around the circle. The flow is the fastest at theta is equal to minus pi on 2 and the slowest at theta is equal to pi on 2. So when a is less than omega and we plot theta dot versus theta, we highlight the area of the slow passage. When a is equal to omega, the system stops oscillating and a half stable fixed point will be born in a saddle node bifurcation at theta is equal to pi on 2. So we consider a is equal to omega and in this case we get a half stable fixed point. When a is greater than omega the half stable fixed point gives way to a stable and a unstable fixed point. So let's plot a greater than omega and we note that we have an unstable fixed point and a stable fixed point. The same information is also displayed by plotting vector fields on the circle. So when a is less than omega, we plot the circle and highlight the fast and the slow passage points. When a is equal to omega, we get a half stable fixed point and with a greater than omega, we have a stable and an unstable fixed point. So we conduct a linear stability analysis of theta dot is equal to omega minus a sine theta for a greater than omega. So let's recall the vector field for the case where a is greater than omega. 
and plot theta dot versus theta. Remember that we had one unstable and one stable fixed point. So we first identify the fixed points. The fixed points theta star satisfy sine theta star is equal to omega divided by a and cos theta star is equal to the plus minus of the square root of 1 minus omega by a squared. So from the previous analysis we know that the linear stability analysis is determined by f prime of theta star which is equal to minus a cos theta star which is equal to minus plus a times the square root of 1 minus omega a squared. So the fixed point with cos theta star greater than 0 is the stable fixed point as f prime of theta star is less than 0. So we find that the linear stability analysis agrees with the plot of the vector field as of course it should. We now look at the oscillation period. For the case a less than omega, the period of the oscillation can actually be found analytically. The time required for theta to change by 2 pi is capital T is equal to the integral dt is equal to 0 to 2 pi dt by d theta times d theta which is equal to 0 to 2 pi d theta divided by omega minus a sine theta. Now note that theta dot is equal to omega minus a sine theta. As we have used this to actually replace dt divided by d theta. So the integral now evaluates to capital T is equal to 2 pi divided by omega square minus a squared square root and so now we have a formula for capital T. Here's a hint for solving the integral one would need to use the substitution u is equal to tan theta by 2. Now let's plot capital T as a function of the parameter a. When a is equal to 0, we get capital T is equal to 2 pi by omega, which is familiar for a uniform oscillator. The period actually increases with a and diverges as a approaches omega from below. One can actually estimate the order of the divergence. Now note that omega square minus a squared square root is equal to omega plus a square root times omega minus a square root which is approximately equal to 2 omega times omega minus a square root as a tends to omega from below. And thus capital T is approximately equal to pi times the square root of 2 divided by the square root of omega times 1 upon the square root of omega minus a. Now this highlights to us that capital tau blows up like a critical minus a to the power of minus a half. 
where a critical is equal to omega and so we end up getting a square root like scaling law. The square root scaling law is in fact a general feature of systems that are close to a saddle node bifurcation. Consider theta dot is equal to omega minus a sine theta for decreasing values of a starting with a greater than omega. As a decreases the two fixed points approach each other, collide and disappear. For a slightly less than omega, the fixed points near pi on 2 actually no longer exist. So now we plot q sub theta versus theta. And we highlight the area of slow passage, which represents the bottleneck. Now let's plot Q of t versus t. And the long stretch is where we have the bottleneck. Now we need to derive a general scaling law for the time that is required to pass through a bottleneck. And what really matters is the behavior of Q dot in the vicinity of the minimum. As the time that is spent there really dominates all other time scales. Now theta dot looks parabolic near its minimum. Thus, the dynamics can be reduced to the normal form for a saddle node bifurcation. We can write the vector field as x dot is equal to r plus x squared, where r is proportional to the distance from the bifurcation and r is much less than 1 and greater than 0. So let's plot the graph of x dot versus x. Now that's a simple-minded plot which we have for x dot versus x. Now that's the plot. Now we need to estimate the time spent in the bottleneck i.e. calculate the time taken for x to go from minus infinity to plus infinity. So we get the t bottleneck is approximately the integral from minus infinity to infinity dx divided by r plus x square which turns out to be pi divided by the square root of r. So this shows the generality of the square root scaling law. So we leave it as an exercise for you to actually evaluate the integral. Now let's consider an example. Recall that for a less than omega, the period of the oscillation was found to be capital T is equal to pi times the square root of 2 divided by the square root of omega times the 1 upon the square root of omega minus a. So we now estimate the period of theta dot is equal to omega minus a sine theta in the limit that a tends to omega from below using the method of normal forms. Now note that the period will be the time required to get through the bottleneck and as the bottleneck occurs at theta is equal to pi on 2, we employ 
a Taylor series expansion about this point. So we let phi is equal to theta minus pi on 2 where theta is small. Then phi dot is equal to omega minus a sine phi plus pi on 2 which is equal to omega minus a cos phi which is equal to omega minus a plus a half a phi squared plus high order terms which is actually now close to the desired normal form. So if we let x is equal to a by 2 to the power of a half times phi and r is equal to omega minus a then 2 by a to the half x dot is approximately equal to r plus x squared to leading order in x. So separating variables gives us capital T is approximately equal to 2 by a to the half the integral of minus infinity to infinity dx divided by r plus x squared which is equal to 2 by a to the half pi divided by the square root of r. So now we go ahead and substitute r is equal to omega minus a. Now as a tends to omega from below we go ahead and replace 2 by a by 2 by omega which finally gives us capital T is approximately equal to pi times the square root of 2 divided by the square root of omega times 1 divided by the square root of omega minus a. Now in this short lecture we introduced the non-uniform oscillator. So this was an equation of the form theta dot is equal to omega minus a sine theta. So if a was equal to 0, we are back to the uniform oscillator. So to that end, the introduction of the parameter a introduces a non-uniformity around the flow in the circuit. Now this equation actually shows up in numerous areas in science and technology. For example, in phase lock loops, oscillating neurons, charge density waves, and so on and so forth. So the interesting cases that show up in this equation are when A is actually less than omega, in which case you have no fixed points, when A is equal to omega, where you have one half stable fixed point, and when A is greater than omega, where you actually have two fixed points, one of them is stable and one of them is unstable. And in this lecture, we did a sort of preliminary analysis of this equation and looked at the vector field of this equation.